Vietnamese American filmmaker Trinity Minha has been making films for about 40 years. An important aspect of her work, I feel, is her negotiation of the ambivalence of visibility, especially with regard to the representation of women's stories, pain narratives, and histories of violence. Her films grapple with the necessity to show, to make known on the one hand, and the dangers of objectification and sensationalism on the other. Her films evoke traces of histories of violence, such as the Vietnam War and French colonialism in West Africa, without showing violent images or recruiting individuals to speak about these events. On the one hand, it's the voiceover and snippets of text on the screen that allude to these histories of violence and women's experiences in particular, but it is also Trin's aesthetic of low definition and silences that creates the space for a more gentle, indirect and poetic engagement with these histories. In this video essay, I explore these practices and how Trin uses them to negotiate the ambivalence of visibility in two of her films, made 34 years apart, Réassemblage and Forgetting Vietnam. Forgetting Vietnam was made in 2016, in commemoration of the 40th anniversary of the ending of the Vietnam War. But where is the war on forgetting Vietnam? In an interview with Lucy Kim Chi Mercier, Trin says that viewers often wonder why there are no images of the war on forgetting Vietnam, but she claims that the war is all over the film, whether visible or otherwise. She says, Its traces are everywhere, present in the environment, in people's memories, in their speech and daily rituals. The very absence of images of the war, which have been so widely circulated and have been used not only to draw attention to atrocity, but also to sensationalize suffering, creates a space for these traces to become known. Réassemblage, Trin's first film made in 1982, can be read as a critical reflection on anthropology and ethnographic filmmaking. The film alludes to the history of French colonialism in Senegal without directly speaking about it. The traces of colonialism are everywhere, in the voiceovers anecdotes about detached paternalistic Peace Corps volunteers and ethnographers, and in the filmic medium itself, brought out by Trin's techniques of repetition, black screens and silences, her refusal to allow for an easy consumption of the images. One of the ways in which Trin addresses the ambivalence of visibility is by veiling images or withholding them altogether. Trin writes about the veil as reality and metaphor. If the act of unveiling has a liberating potential, she says, so does the act of veiling. It all depends on the context in which such an act is carried out, or more precisely on how and where women see dominance. So that when women decide to lift the veil, one can say that they do so in defiance of their men's oppressive right to their bodies. But when they decide to keep or put on the veil they once took off, they might do so to reappropriate their space or to claim a new difference. One can easily apply the metaphor of the veil to filmmaking. Uh -huh. Hey. 
Visibility is ambivalent, but it is not only the visible image that is ambivalent in this sense. The voice is too. When we speak, we speak in a particular context, often expected to speak as representatives of a given gender, race, culture or class. So how does Trin address this ambivalence of the voice? She says, Within the context of women's speech, silence has many faces. Like the veiling of women just mentioned, silence can be subversive when it frees itself from the male-defined context of absence, lack and fear as feminine territories. On the one hand, we face the danger of inscribing femininity as absence, as lack and blank in rejecting the importance of the act of enunciation. On the other hand, we understand the necessity to place women on the side of negativity and to work in undertones, for example, in our attempts at undermining patriarchal systems of value. Silence as a will not to say or to unsay, and as a language of its own, has barely been explored. But Trin not only experiments with literal silences, but also with the notable absence of individual speaking, as she does in Forgetting Vietnam. Here she instead focuses on the cultural and historical significance of water in Vietnam. Trin's practices of refusal are fundamental to her engagement with the ambivalent nature of images and voices and constitute a kind of quiet resistance, receding from view, receding into silences, evoking rather than explaining. A film on Senegal. But what in Senegal? I feel less and less the need to express myself. Is that something else I've lost? Something else I've lost. 